Hello everyone, in this video I want to give you guys 10 steps that you guys can follow to publish your own research paper. So if you're applying for a master's program or especially for a PhD program, your research is going to be, you know, like a super important part of your profile, right? For PhD, it's absolutely necessary. For master's, of course, it's optional, but having it is going to be like, you know, really strong point in your profile, right? Even if you guys are not applying to a research-based program, having a research project in your profile shows the admissions committee that you are someone who's able to take the knowledge that they learned in class and then apply it in a real world situation. And of course, get like a stamp of approval from like a peer reviewed journal or conference and so on, right? So here are the 10 steps that you guys need to follow in order to publish your own research paper. Step one, approach a professor, right? So in the first step is you gotta find a guide for your research work. Now this guide you can either find through your own university, you can approach you know, one of the professors that you know at your university, that you know, you know might be good at research, likes to do research and all that, and that's what I did. Or you can approach a professor like you know, not from your university, from a different university within your own country or like, you know, like any, any other country. Right? That's a little bit more complicated because you know professors are a little bit shy to work with students that they don't really know well. But the easiest way to push forward is just to find professors in your own college. The second step is to decide on a topic. Okay, so now that you have a guide, now you need to decide on a topic for your research work, right? Again, there's two ways that you can do this, right? The first way is either you will have your own research idea, which if you do, that's great. If you don't, the professor might have a research idea that they want to explore and they want to make use of you, you know, your research skills and all that in order to see if, you know, if a paper can be published or there's kind of some kind of potential within that idea. That was what happened to me, you know, my, my professor had like a decent idea and then we worked on it, we built on, we built on that together and then we were able to publish a paper, right? So that's the first way. The second way that is that some professors might ask you to do your own literature review and then figure out what kind of areas you guys can potentially do research work on. So what this means is you will essentially take, pick a topic, like for example, computer vision, and then you will read a bunch of papers on computer vision, you know, papers that just came out, and then you'll try to see gaps in those papers, right? So like, how can you maybe extend that experiment? Maybe how can you do like an experiment in like a different way? Maybe there's like a potential idea that you come up with while reading those papers and so on, right? So then as you do literature review, you might get some new ideas to explore, you know, this research field further. The third step is to start learning and start working. So in a lot of cases for your research work, you might have to build up new skills, right? So for this, you can use courses on Udemy or Coursera or EDX. You can even find a bunch of YouTube videos online if they'll teach you what you need to know. And once you build those skills, then of course you start working towards your research project, you know, starting slow and trying to, you know, work with your professor, trying to figure out, set goals for your project, and then, you know, getting through those goals. Step four is to produce a proof of concept. So proof of concept is sort of like a prototype for your project or like, or like your idea just to show, you know, onlookers that, hey, okay, this project has like, you know, some direction, like, you know, it actually has potential to turn out to be great and we just need to keep push forward, keep pushing forward in that, in that direction, right? So proof of concept doesn't have to be really fancy. It can just be like a small version of your targeted project. For example, let's say your, your project is to create like a self-driving car, right? So maybe like the car is your big goal, but then if you want a proof of concept, maybe you create like a self-driving ATV or maybe you create like a self-driving, you know, one of those child ATVs that, you know, little kids, um, little kids drive around on. So one of those things, right? So these, this would be like a prototype or like a proof of concept. Before I move on to the next step, I just wanna remind you guys to subscribe to the channel because we have a ton of graduate program, you know, master's, PhD, GRE, TOEFL related information coming out every single week, so make sure you're subscribed. And step five is to produce a complete product, right? So now from your proof of concept, you go on improving it, you fix all the problems that you need to, and you just build your final product, right? So once you have your complete product ready, that's when you know the results of your research work and you can actually have something that you can tell other people about in conferences and journals. Step six is to produce a preliminary paper. So what this means is essentially now that you have your product or your result of your experiment basically, right? You wanna put this down in like a scientific format, right? So you basically just um, copy like an IEEE, IEEE template or maybe whatever other templates, there's so many other paper templates out there. So you wanna just copy like a template and then write your paper based off of that template. Basically just, you know, put down all the information that you guys have learned, all the tests that you completed, take pictures and draw graphs, you know, whatever the information that you need in order to build like a preliminary paper. 
step seven is to pick a publication, right? So now you have to actually choose to publish your paper somewhere. So you'd actually choose a publication that you want to go to. Now, again, having a guide is super awesome because they'll just tell you what publication you guys can publish in because they will be able to judge your research work and sort of tell whether your research work you know, is, is good enough for say like an IEEE journal or like, you know, good enough for like Springer or Elsevier. I hope that's how you pronounce that. Or maybe you'd have to, you know, target a little bit lower. The guide will be able to tell you where you can exactly publish your paper. Step eight is to submit your paper regarding the publication specifications, right? So depending on the journal and the conference that you guys are submitting your paper into, they will have different requirements, right? So some of them will want, you know, they want like some two inch margins or maybe one inch margins. Some of them will prefer having it in two columns or some of them will want the research work in one column. There's gonna be a lot of different specifications for each particular, um, you know, publication, right? That's why when you have your preliminary paper, all you have to do is just convert that preliminary paper to whatever specification that the publication is asking for and then you just submit your new paper you know to those specifications step nine is to wait for further edits right so once you submit your first you know first draft i guess um, they will come back to you and they will tell you okay so we want this change we want that change we want you know better graphs this this part is done improperly and all that kind of stuff right so you'll need to make all those changes and then resubmit it and then wait for their approval once again and then step 10 is that your work is published, right? So you're basically done now. If you, if you publish it at a conference, then you know, go fly, fly to that conference, present at the conference. If it's in a journal, then I guess just wait for the journal to come out and you're pretty much done now, right? So now all you have to do is just, you know, write down the citation of your publication in your, in your resume, on your LinkedIn profile and all that. And in your SOP or, you know, whenever you're applying to college, you can say that, you know, you submitted this paper at this journal, at this journal or conference, and this was a topic, and this is the date and all that. So those are the 10 steps to publish your research. First, approach a professor. Second, decide a topic. Third, start learning in whatever skills that you need and start working towards a project. Step four, produce a proof of concept. Step five is to produce a complete product or you know, the completed version of your experiment. Step six is to prepare a preliminary paper, you know, do the literature review, add the pictures, graphs, whatever. Step seven is to select a publication. Step eight is to submit a paper according to the specifications. And then step nine is to wait for further edits, you know, from those, from that publication. And then step 10, you're done, your work is published. And that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want me to delve deeper into, you know, conducting research, you know, supervised versus unsupervised, how to select the right publication, how many papers that you need, you know, if you want me to discuss all these things, let me know in the comments below. And if it's popular enough, of course, I will make a video if you guys really want me to. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.